Hello and welcome back to a splash of paint. Now it's time for me to demonstrate two more watercolour skies. Last week we did a very simple, basic flat sky followed by a bit of a cloudy one. This time we're going to go for a nice atmospheric sunset and a bit of a dark nighttime sky. The first job is to get a 5p or any coin, round coin that is, and wrap it in some kitchen roll. Just grab it and just give it a bit of a twist. Nice and tight. Make a stamp out of it, a sun or moon painting gadget, put that to one side. Get a few colours mixed, then we're going to go for these nice dramatic skies. So we'll start off with the large brush, the 20. We can almost mix as we go along on this, but we'll start off by getting some burnt sienna. And then we'll go for some aureolin. Or you could use a cadmium yellow for this as well. So a nice kind of ambery, yellowy colour. And then we need to go for some of the darker colours, so we'll go for natural blue. Drag that down in the palette there. And then we'll also use some natural grey. So that'll do is for the sunset sky. What we'll do is we'll make sure the brush is nice and clean. And then we'll wet this one half of the paper. So wet into wet skies work better for these kind of atmospheric skies because all the paint mixes together. And we'll start off by putting the warm colours first. We'll go for the yellow, first of all. Just going to sweep it across on a bit of an angle, really. And just do the bottom half of the paper. Maybe even a touch stronger. The yellows can be quite vivid. You can almost go to the top of the paper there. Clean brush. And then we'll get burnt sienna, which is quite pale, right at the top and then streaking down towards the yellow. Get it to mix with the yellow so you're getting the kind of golden evening sky colours. So they all nicely mix through. Then we'll go for the blue, which if anything is a slightly stronger colour. And it's good just to dab it on tissue a little bit as well and then just work it in, especially in the corner. Try and maintain that angle and keep that going until it fades away to nothing as it gets lower down. Okay, what we'll do next is go for the size 6 brush and we'll go for the natural grey, which is fairly strong but also quite a dry brush, so we'll dab it on tissue first. And then we'll just do some twisty clouds. Just imagine smoke coming out of the chimney, that's the kind of situation that we're looking at to start with. Twist and move along, let the paint spread, let it all run. And then dry the brush off and just kind of give it a bit of a streak as it gets lower. And what we'd also do there as well is go thicker with the grey, make the grey nice and strong. And then we can bring one down this side, but because it's much darker, it's going to stand forward and it will create a nice separation of clouds. a bit of time into the shape there. There we go, so you get that nice kind of cross effect. Clean brush again, wipe it dry, and then literally just brush away the excess coming down. And it's nice just to drop in a few slightly lower down lines, nice and thin lines for this one. You can put a bit of a twist on the tops of those as well. Let's just bring one from that side as well. You've all seen these skies in the evening and in the morning as well. You get that nice silhouette effect. Bit of a wiggle. And then we'll put the sun on, which is the five pence. Somewhere around the yellow area. In fact, to make it look more interesting, we can actually get a bit of alizarin crimson there. And then just sweep across where you want to add the sun. And then we can go for this five pence twisted in tissue. Press it on. Hold it quite firmly and let go. And you should see that nice effect of the sun there. Which, if you've got the grey on your brush, I often think it's nice just to lightly add a couple of wispy lines coming over the top. 
There we go. So that's quite an atmospheric evening sky. You can spend as much time as you want on the clouds, as long as the colour is thicker. For example, I could just tidy up some of these edges a little bit more if I felt the need to do that. So that would be really nice. Put some mountains at the bottom. You've made a nice picture. If we go for a really dark, dramatic sky, using a similar technique, but obviously using much more stronger colours, wetting the paper through again. There we go, so it's all nicely covered. And this time we're going to use natural yellow, which is a sandy colour. Again, fairly strong. And we're going to twist that in. See how the brush is pushed up against the grain of the paper. Give it a nice twist. Work it down towards the bottom. And then we need to go dark. So I'm using natural grey and a little bit of Prussian blue. That's always a good evening sky colour. And then we're going to go very, very mix it all in and dramatic and really get it working through. Bit of drama there for you folks. You can see that nice atmosphere starting to come through. Can you see how the brush is squashed against the paper? Twist it all in, let it all work through. And then we're going to go darker. So we're going to go thick grey, a little bit of Prussian blue, but it's very, very thick at that point. And we can just work in that extremely dark and dramatic clouds, just lightly picking the way through the sky. Again, clean brush, give it a nice squeeze, or even do it in the tissue. And then you can just kind of make sure the lines just slightly soften in. Then, if we find a clean bit of tissue, 5P again, just going to wrap it in there. Don't use the same piece you used for that sky because it will stay in the paper. Nice, a nice twist. And then somewhere where you can imagine the moon poking through, I'm thinking probably about there somewhere. Just going to slightly overlap the edge of the cloud. Press it quite firmly. Let go. It should leave that nice shape. And then just to finish off, use the size 6 brush, a little bit of grey, and just get a little bit of overlap the cloud just runs over the top of it. And I think that just really adds that little bit of extra detail to the sky. And make it look as though the moon's just poking through the back there, just using the damp brush to soften some of those edges. So it's really, really effective. And there's no harm in spending a bit of time if the paper lets you just add in a few little highlights to the to the clouds there, just so though the moon's catching. Quite an effective little technique. So there you go folks, hopefully two very useful skies that you can use in your landscape watercolours. Why not have a go yourself and remember the most important thing is to have fun and enjoy yourself. Why not show us how you get on by uploading examples of your work on the SAA website, visit saa.co.uk and look for the community tab for more details. Right folks, time to cross over to the other side of the studio and clock in with popular SAA artist and teacher Warren Seeley for some timely advice on how to find the perfect angle. Right, I want to show you a little technique for finding angles. Now, most people know about the technique where you, if you wanted to find the roof line of this building, you hold it there so it would be over here, and then you bring it over to your pencil, then you strike the line. Most people know that technique, uh, and it's a good technique, but I've got uh, a different technique that you can use as well to kind of double check, and I call it the clock system. Now, what you do is you hold your pencil, your brush, um, vertically, um, next to the angle that you want to see and you imagine this is a clock and that this is always at 12 o'clock. So you hold it up vertically and that's at 12 o'clock and then you place it next to the angle you want to find, in this case the roof. And let me show you so it's kind of very clear. So this is 12 o'clock and I want to find this angle. And instead of a asking what angle is that, I ask myself what time is it? So what time is that? It's obviously three o'clock. So how about this one here? It's four o'clock. 
So going back to our haste, stick my, my 12 o'clock here. What angle is this line here? It's 7 o'clock. Other side, it's 5 o'clock. Um, and this works very well also if, you, if you're doing a portrait and maybe you've got um, a portrait in three-quarter view and you need to find the angle of the nose. Now you can find the angle like this and transpose it over to your canvas, but you can also, you can put the pencil on the edge or you can put it on this side and ask yourself what time is that? So that would be about one o'clock. So your nose is at one o'clock. Um, this is a great little technique um, and you, the more you use it, the, the better you get at it. I mean, you, you start to find yourself saying it's about half two, quarter to three, that kind of thing. So it's very useful um, and I recommend you try it next time you, you have a, an angle to find, next time you're out in the field or you know, you're need, needing to find angles, try it, it really works. So see you next time, good luck with that. Thanks for that, Warren. We've always got time for your top tips. Well, it's time for us to take a little break now, but join us in part three when professional artist Fraser Scarf returns to complete his Constable-inspired charcoal sketch in the concluding part of today's Try Your Hand Up project. And Jeremy Ford demonstrates how to mix up a magical treat to help your watercolours glow in today's practical art by exercise. We'll see you very soon. <laughs>